welcome. We are here today with our Artists as Entrepreneurs podcast series. I'm going to be introducing our interviewee very shortly. We're really excited to have him. So Brett is someone that Anthony and I have known for just about four years now, maybe a little over. I don't want to tell too much about his story, but his name is Brett Napoli. He's joining us from sunny Florida. And Brett, I'm going to unmute you and bring you on. How are you this morning, Brett? Fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Happy to awesome. be here. Great. Well, we're super excited that you were able to hop on with us this morning. You are a creative artist for sure. Uh, you're a life artist and you're an extremely successful business owner. So we're really thankful that, that you're going to be able to share quite a lot of your knowledge and skills with our group here because that's what we're about. We are ridding the world of the starving artist mentality. So <laughs> I love it. Awesome. So, so that the audience can get to know you a little bit. Um, can you tell us a bit about yourself and, and what it is that you do? Sure. Um, so I'm originally from Connecticut. I moved to Florida about eight years ago. Um, I started my own business when I was probably about 18 or 21 years old. Um, I would say that I'm a web developer. I build and manage websites for small and medium sized businesses. Um, I help with online marketing, branding, um, graphic design, and pretty much all elements of bringing a small to medium sized business to the web, marketing it and growing it. Kind of like a kind of like a biz dev person for hire um, that focuses primarily on web and internet marketing. Um, I build primarily WordPress websites as well as e-commerce websites as well. And I'm involved in the creative process of not only building a brand, but reinforcing that brand through web and through social and through online marketing. Awesome. I love it. That's a, definitely something some of the, the members could use help on. We actually even had someone early on when we started the group ask for kind of feedback on their website. And because that's what I, I mean, those of us that are artists, yes, we're creative and we have that technique, but web development, graphics, that's all like a specific art. So I'd like to think so. <laughs> well, it definitely is. There's, there's a, a skill and a science. It's, it's a science and an art, I would say. Um, you know, I, I was watching, I think you did an Instagram live or maybe a Facebook live the other day and you were going through someone's website and showing, you know, why they weren't getting traffic to their products and the importance of the navigation bar. So we're definitely going to tell people your social handles because you have a lot of knowledge on there that you do. Well, I mean, it just, that, that was cool to see you do, you know, just walk through what the website used to look like. Yeah. And you know, for you, it, it's your art, it's your science. So it, it just makes sense what needs to be where. But some of us think, well, no, this should be there because of this. And it's like, that's why you're not making money. So yeah. Well, what I kind of, what I kind of realized, and I get a lot of this through um, kind of like following and admiring successful people like through YouTube and, and such. What I kind of realized is that every single person has something does something very, very interesting to lots of other people and things that I didn't really think anybody would care about um, are actually quite interesting. And recently I just decided to, you know, I'm doing this all the time. Why don't I just turn the camera on it and record it? And the fact that not only that you saw it, but found value in that is just a testament to the fact that, that that is true and that the things that we do every day actually are interesting to lots of people. And sometimes we don't think that they are. So I'm glad that you enjoy that and, it's feedback like that, um, that causes me to do more of it. So I'm glad that awesome. that provided value. Awesome. Well, good to hear. Well, yeah. I'd love to, um, for you to share with the audience kind of how you got to, how, how did you get to where you are today? You know, I mean, did you come out the womb a <laughs> successful entrepreneur, you know, maybe tell us a little bit about that first business that you started and, and what it's morphed into today. Sure. Um, geez. Wow. So, the, the, the hole is so, the rabbit hole is so deep on this. Um, well, you know, I gotta give, I gotta give a lot of credit. Um, I gotta give a lot of credit to my brother, actually. Um, when we were really young, he convinced my parents that we needed a computer. And I was like, who cares? Like, who cares? What, what is the, what's the point? And he pushed them into getting us a computer at a really young age. And I remember exploring this thing and being like, 
this is the most amazing thing that has ever existed ever. And I remember like, sometimes they just say like, when you see something and you know, you just know. And I remember being like, man, this is the most insane thing. And from my small house in Connecticut or my small uh, town in Connecticut, I remember just thinking like, this is the, this is the portal to the entire universe. If I can figure out how to unlock this, like I can create infinite value for myself. Like I can create my entire life using this. And I remember looking at it and being like, this is the most, like, this is, this is just the very beginning. I remember going to middle school and we had these little keyboards that didn't even have computers and we typed on these keyboards. And I was like, man, the fact that we're typing on these, like the, the fact that the computer is so slow and in such an infant stage is like, this is ridiculous. Like this, people will look back and they will say like, that we were there at like the gold rush of this computer. So anyways, um, I identified really early that the computer was gonna be my connection to the world. When I was, um, when I was in middle school, um, I, realized that, I realized that the internet was the part of the computer that was of the most interest to me. And that it wasn't just the computer, it was actually the internet. And I always loved art, I always loved creating, I loved art class, but I hated, to be completely honest with you, I just hated like having paint on my fingers. And I, and I hated that once I painted something, it had permanence. And what I liked about creating art on the computer was that I could place it and move it and rearrange it and adjust it and build on it over time. It was like it never ended. Um, so I started, um, I started kind of doing small little entrepreneurial things when I was a kid. Um, eBay was kind of like the first place that the entrepreneurial bug sort of like got me, which was I could go down in the basement rustle around in some stuff and sell it on eBay. And like, that was to me the most magnificent thing in the world. So uh, <laughs> my brother and I used to like dig around in the basement and sell everything from like board games to um, old air purifiers that had been sitting there forever to old uh, VHS tapes. And we would put them up on eBay and, and sell them. And then um, we, started, uh, we started realizing, my brother actually started realizing that selling lots of books was a, was a good business. So we started trying to accumulate books and we would sell big lots of books on eBay and ship them out. And that was kind of like the next, like the next step. Um, then I realized that uh, I started playing a ton of video games. I was playing um, Counter-Strike was this video game that I played all the time on my computer. And I realized that it gave me this social connection to the world. Cause I could talk to people, I could play with my friends in this game. And I, when you get really good, you got to join what was called the clan. And I saw that my brother and some other people had joined these clans. And I remember looking up my brother one time on his clan website. And I was just like, whoa, like, how did they build this website? How does this even exist? How do you, how are you able to create something that's making me feel like you're awesome when you're not even speaking to me? And it was, <laughs> it was kind of then that I realized that like, this was, this is the way that you can scale influence is that you can create, you can build, you can place, and then it will work for you 24 seven forever. And I was just like, I need to know how to do that. Um, so I, I actually, uh, I contacted a friend of my brother's and he gave me one line of HTML code for a table. It was basically a small table, which is like in HTML code or web code is a, is a box. And he basically said, use this one box and build websites full of blocks of these boxes. Um, so I started building websites around these boxes. And when I would put up funny jokes and things and people were interested in them and laugh at them the next day at school, they'd be like, Oh my God, I was looking at your website last night. That was hilarious. I decided that um, I was going to take my love for like photography, for writing, for music, for web development, design, creativity, and I was going to put it all together. So I started a website called beanapoli.com when I was in high school. And I basically started blogging, um, writing content about my life, things that I thought were funny, conversations that I had on AIM, and I would paste them up on this website. And I realized that I would stay up all night building this website out. And when I would get to school in the morning, people would be like, yo, I saw your post last night, that was hilarious. And it was just like the perfect example of like the scaling of influence. I could do something once and everybody could consume it forever, infinitely, anywhere, in, instantly. And, and it was like, then that I kind of realized that like, this is where I'm gonna figure out how to make money. So I started selling t-shirts um, with my name on them. I started selling things around, based around the website, like merchandise and stuff like that. And then when I was a senior in high school, um, one, of my, uh, one of my football coaches 
told me that he was building Adirondack chairs in his um, shop class. And he was just like, hey, we're building these Adirondack chairs. Do you guys, can you build us a website for the Adirondack chairs? And I wanted to, actually, I wasn't a senior. I was, a, I was actually a sophomore. And I wanted to impress him because I wanted to be, I wanted to really kill it on the football team. So I was like, all right, I got gotcha. you. I'm going to build this website. I built a website for this guy for no money. And I remember, and I, and I spent all this time designing it. And the Adirondack chairs were like $125 for these Adirondack chairs that the kids were building in class. And they were going to sell these Adirondack chairs to finance some part of the shop class. So at the end of the semester, I was like, hey, Mr. Melkars, you know, how many, how many chairs did you sell from that website? And he's like, oh, we sold 85 chairs. And I was like, 85 times 125. I was like, holy shit, that guy sold $10,000 worth of chairs. Or, you know, forgive my math. And I was just like, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, and I, so, I tried it, so I tried to get in the business of selling websites. Um, one of the first website contracts that I got, contracts, um, was for, I think it was $25. And this band, a local band, wanted me to build their website. And I spent hours and hours and hours building up this website, putting all of my effort and love into it. And then they ended up saying, like, we don't like it. And they just didn't pay for it. And, uh, yeah, and then, like, um, I just kind of tried to hone the business of selling web services. I started with, like, graphic design and building websites out. And I just kind of, like, got one job and then the next job. And, again, like <laughs> – I gotta give credit to my brother because he he actually got me like connected with a guy that got me one of the first website jobs that I did, and um, it was a it was a site development company like a construction company that would basically like flatten the land for buildings to be built um, in Canton, Connecticut. I remember I drove almost an hour to get up there, and I sold the website for like seven hundred dollars. And I remember just being like, "This is this is it! Like I got it, seven hundred bucks! Like I'm rich! Like I'm gonna be rich forever!" And um. And that was kind of like where it all began. And I just kind of continued to build on the momentum of that. And as I had one job after the next, working at the bank, um, working as a busboy for a time, I just realized that like, I have to figure out how to make my, be in complete control of my entire life using this instrument. And um, ever since then, that has been my focus, like pretty much day in and day out is like figuring out how I can be anywhere at any time, building and growing and monetizing my lifestyle and i haven't had a job in over since 2008 so i've been wow. in business for 11 11 years full time without a paycheck from somebody else that's huge and that was actually going to be my next question which you kind of touched on which was you know were you always able to fully support yourself through this art through the web development and so it sounds like you were bouncing around side gigs here and there but yep. 11 years man yeah, uh, 2005 was when I graduated high school. I went to college, went to the University of Connecticut, and I knew immediately that that the technology, the technology side of of college education had not caught up to how quickly I could do it self paced. And I realized like there's going to be no web development class that's going to be able to evolve quickly enough for them to create curriculum and then teach me it. By the time I learn it, I'm going to be already it's already going to be outdated. So I realized that I was not going to be able to learn web development at college. And I quickly lost interest, dropped out within a year and a half. I was building websites on the side and I did small jobs to try to make it happen. Um, I was a bank teller when I was like 18, 19 years old. I worked at a web development company, two of them actually. Um, I worked as a, um, I worked as a bus boy at a really high end, uh, really high end five star, uh, five star hotel, uh, four star restaurant. I did that for a while. Like, like room service and all this other shit. And I remember just thinking to myself, it was like a Sunday morning. Um, I had a breakfast shift and I was just like, this is like, there's, there's more than this. Like, this is, this is bullshit. I got to get out of this. And I was just like, I need to just like commit and dedicate myself to like really making this happen. And, um, I used to just like pick up odd jobs as a way of like financing my life. And at that time my expenses were really, really low. So I just would work relentlessly day in, day in, day in and day out and all through the night um, to try to get ahead. And one of my, one of my like favorite kind of little stories is um, a family friend owned a cleaning business and I used to get picked up in his van at like 12 o'clock at night and we would drive like 45 minutes to a grocery store. And I used to scrape gum off of the floor at a grocery store in the middle of the night 
from like midnight to 5 a.m. and I would help clean the floors, mop, sweep, oh. scrape gum off the fucking floor um, because I was hungry. Sorry. Yeah, do you remember, and you don't have to answer this if you don't remember, if you don't want to share, do you remember what you were getting paid for a gig like that? 15 bucks an hour. Yeah. Under so the table. You stayed hungry and you stayed humble. I think that's what's important. You know, you did what you had to do and you were never above any job. Or gig. Yeah, I mean, it's, they, I mean, what I, what I realized was that I have to be willing to do anything. And it was kind of like that mindset was always there. It was just like, this is it. Like it, it's, there is nothing more. Like this is the answer. I have to do this. And like, I will die trying to do this. And I was just like, I'm not going to go to work for somebody else. I can't do it. And it was just like, I would have done anything to do it. And that gum was like a, one of those moments where I'm just like, yo, this is like, this is the bottom, you know, like this is, this is where it all ends. And, um, I just remember thinking that and it was like, if you're willing to do this, like you're willing to do anything. And it was just like that type of mindset that really made it work. Um, and I, I maintain that. And like, look, if, if my business didn't make money today, I would go and scrape the same gum off the floor if I had to. But like now there's other ways that I can creatively avoid that. But if, if that's what I had to do and that was the only option that there was, you better believe that I would do that all day, every day for the rest of my life so that I could maintain this. Because there is no other option. There yeah. was never another option and there will never be another option. And that doesn't mean that I couldn't work with people or work for people or be part of an organization. It just means that freedom is the primary target eternally. And the only thing that I wanted and the only thing that I ever wanted was freedom. Um, and that is why I would do anything was, is for the freedom. It's not about anything but that. It's, it's really that simple. Well, cause I mean, you've created a, a business around your art and skill that you can do anywhere. Yep. And so, I mean, honestly, so many artists really can do their art anywhere. It's just the bridge of the making money while doing the art anywhere. Yeah, so. I, I realized I realized early on with the with the websites, like, because there was actually like a there was what I would call like an inflection point when I was I think when I was eighteen, uh, maybe eighteen or nineteen, um, where I basically got on a kayak. I was in North Conway, New Hampshire, and I remember I woke up early and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. I'm gonna get on this kayak. I'm gonna kayak to the center of the lake and I'm gonna watch the sunrise and I'm not gonna come back from that kayak to the shore where all my friends are sleeping until I figure out what I wanna do with the rest of my life. And like, I swear to God, that was the goal. And I woke up, I got in the kayak, I kayaked out to the center of this lake and I waited for the sun to come up and I was just like, okay, like map your entire life. And I was just like, who do I wanna be? What do I want people to think about me? How do I want to do it? How could I do it? What are my priorities? I was like, all right, freedom, anywhere, warmth, beach. Like I want people to, I want people to look up to me and value my opinion. Um, I want the autonomy. I want to be able to go anywhere at any time. Like I want infinite flexibility. Like I want people to admire, to admire me and I want to create value for other people. And it was just like, when I, when I just kind of like jumbled all these ideas together, it just kind of hit me that like, I wouldn't want to be anybody in the universe but me. And I remember at that moment, I was just like, this is like, this is the pinnacle of like, like if I was in, if I was a spirit, like floating around in the, in the cosmos. And I was like, if I wanted, I could be anything. Like I would have been me at that moment at that time. And like, that was the pinnacle of like life. And I was just like, dude. And I remember, I remember <laughs> it was crazy. That's I remember, huge, man. That's I, huge. How was, old were you? Uh, 18. And nice. It was nuts. And I was nuts. And, and like my best friend, Dan Steinfeld, I remember he was sitting back on my, um, on the shore and I kayak back. And I'll never forget. It. I pulled up the kayak. He was sitting there reading a book called, I think it was called why is God laughing? I think by Deepak Chopra. And, and I was just like, dude, like, how are you doing, man? And he's like the most chill, like level kid that I like ever met in my life. And, and like, is a, just such an amazing person. And he was like, he was like, if you listen, he's like, if you listen closely, you can hear the hum of the universe. And I was just like, bruh, like, bruh. And it just kind of like spaced me out from like the whole thing. And I was just like, dude, like this dude understands, like it, it really is as simple as just like, 
as, as just like ma- mapping it in your mind. And I'm like, I'm like an emotional person. I like tear up just thinking about it because it was such a like, it was such a magical just like moment. And I, and I recognized it at the time. And that, wa- that was why it was just like so, just such a like beautiful experience. I love that. Now, well, now I have to ask, cause I know um, Ambition Insights, uh, oftentimes you've got, you know, the image of the, the water and the clouds and the horizon behind it. Yeah. I mean, is that what you saw in that moment or that's just a, a coincidence? And then I'm also curious where Ambition Insights, the name comes from. Yeah, um, the reason that I like, the reason that the ocean like kind of calls to me and, and I know that you know people say that, but the thing about the ocean that to me is the most magnificent is that it's like, it's like staring into infinite. It's like, it just, there is nothing. It's the absence of anything and thus, it is everything. It's like staring into nothingness. And I, that's why it's so amazing to me. So like when I go to the ocean and I stare out, I just love that there's nothing to see. And like by there not being anything to look at, you can look at everything else. And that's why it's so sick. And that's why I always use the ocean. It wasn't about specifically that moment, which is an interesting connection. Um, Cause I was in a lake actually at the time. Okay. Okay. But, but it was like, but that is kind of what it is. Like, staring into the infinite infinite possibility infinite 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 everything just the infinite the fact that like there's infinite abundance in everything um so that's really what it is and the name ambition insight uh is actually i remember i'm i I would consider myself somewhat of a somewhat of like a wordsmith i like love writing i always loved i always loved writing um and i remember thinking like how do i name how does a person like me name their business because words are so important to me. So it was a very long and arduous journey to find like, what are the two most powerful words that I could think of that are related to what I'm trying to do. And what I, and like the name ambition always attracted me because it has my initials in it, B, T, N, are in the word ambition. Um, so ambition always, and like, I always felt like ambition was something that I had like in spades infinitely all the time. Like I was, I'm always hungry for, for more, never satisfied, like always trying to get like level up to the next position. Um, so I was like, ambition is definitely the word, but like, what is the other half? Like, what does a business need other than ambition? Like you can't just be hungry. There has to be something that, that takes that hunger and hones it into something that can be monetized, that can be turned into value, that can be, yeah. that can be molded. And, and I was just like, what is ambition without insight? And I realized that like those two words were the two most powerful words that I could think of that related to what I was doing. And it was like through the thesaurus that, um, that I came across them. And then when I put them together, I was just like, shit, I'm giving insight on ambition. It's ambition insight. It's that's what it is. I'm giving insight on how to take your ambition and turn it into freedom. I love that. And I I love, um, you know, you shared kind of before we went live, um, the importance of, of sharing with people, not so much what you do, but, but what happens because of what you do. And I'd love for you to, to touch on that a little, a little bit because you've poured into us with, with your passion for what you do and you love, and, and for you, it's to create the freedom. But I'd love to hear kind of your passion for your, your clients and your art and, and why you do it. Well, why I, why I do this specific business? Yeah, and, and what it creates for people. Yeah, well, really what it is is it's, it's empowering them to like have what I have sort of or, or – to have their own freedom. So it's like, what better, what better of a job than to help people be free? That, cause, that, cause it's like, if my entire existence and my entire everything is always focused on this, then like, if I could empower other people to have that, like done, that, that sounds good, I'm into that. But really the, the primary reason was like, it didn't, I wasn't just like, all right, I'm gonna do this. It was kind of like, it, it began with, it began truly with, art and it was just like how do I I want to be like a graphic designer and what I realized about graphic design was like I'm going to be designing graphics for other people all day forever unless uh, and like that's not going to be enough of a of money it's not going to be enough money um so I started building websites because it was a place to showcase the graphic design it was almost just like 
if I painted pictures all day, but I didn't have a gallery to show them, or I wasn't out selling them, or I wasn't pushing them, it's like I can't just create endlessly. So the website was the way to take the design, take the creativity, take the art, and then like, and then turn it into like what I usually call like a sellable unit. I always talk about that, like even in my business, it's like you have to make sellable units. You have to have something that can be that can go from here to here and is a value creation. Um, so that's that's really what it was. Is like. I was like, all right, websites are going to be much more valuable than just graphic design. And I really like a website because a website has purpose and I love art. I really do. And like music, I love all these things and they're so magical to me and the way that they make me feel, but they don't give me the, they don't give me the, the same, they don't give me the same, like, like quantifiable purpose. Like, like, I remember when I, when I started that drop, my dance music website, we interviewed Armin Van Buren. And I remember thinking like, this guy is the top DJ on the planet. Like this guy is literally the number one, like this is the top. And I remember thinking to myself like, what a magical person, this is amazing, like this guy's awesome. But I just remember thinking to myself like, I wish this was like Mark Cuban. I wish this was a person that like was a, was a business person, like a tycoon. And even though he is, and it's, it's super magical what he does, I love the, I love the business element because it's, it's creating and facilitating commerce. It's like people moving like a train. People have to get from here to here. You build the train, you build the tracks. You're like, you're creating a flow of commerce. And I don't, I don't mean to like denigrate creativity and art and music and, and graphic design and, and all of that stuff because it's all so magical and necessary. But I recognize that for me, I was more interested in the commerce connection of the movement of people, not necessarily the feelings and the, and the, and like kind of the ohm of it all, but more of like somebody built that skyscraper, like that like people are living in there, working in there, like operating in there, commerce is occurring in there. Like who built that dude? Like that is the kind of thing that to me is like, ugh, like that's what I, that's what always like interests right. me. Well, and, and there's a need for both. I mean, there's a team behind Armin yep. he, that do geek out on that stuff, that side of the creation and, and all of that. And so it's, you know, how do those of us that are artists, until we're an Armin Van Buren version in whatever art we're in, how do we do that for ourselves, you know? And, and so I'd love to get into that a little bit. I'm, you know, I'm looking at my questions. I think, I mean, would you say that... The, the gum chewing was your toughest time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I was never... Was there a tougher time you remember getting through, maybe maybe in the development of the business or and, and kind of yeah. what got you through it? Yeah, there was, um, I sold a, uh, oh, man, I forget what this, I forget what the software was even called, but I sold a, um, I sold like an e-commerce website to a, um, to a furniture manufacturer in Pennsylvania. And it was the largest contract that I ever got. It was like $13,000 to build this website. And when I sold it, I, I knew that I could do it, but I didn't know exactly how I could do it. And I knew that I would need other vendors to help me. I knew that I needed like a guy that could write PHP, which has never been a language that I've really been interested in because I don't, even though I, even though I play in code, I don't like love code. It's too black and white for me. I like the creativity and the color. It's just a means to an end. I code because I have to code, but I knew that I needed a PHP developer that had experience in this specific piece of software. So I sold it. And one of the hardest times of my like life where I got so frustrated was because I couldn't do it. I had to rely on this other person to do it. And it made me so mad because it was like not on my schedule, not on my time, not on my budget. Like, I was just like, are you going to do it today, dude? Like, what the f why is this broken? Like, what the fuck? And, and I just like, you know, like if you've, <laughs> if you've seen me online or seen me on like my Instagram, like, and even though I embellish it a little bit, like I ramp up quick. I'm just like, dude, no, 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 no. And I just like fly off the fucking zip off the, off the handle. And it was kind of like that. Like, dude, why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing this? And like, I like would snap because I was just out of control of the means of production. And that killed me. Kind of like, kind of like if you were, if you were manufacturing, let's say you were manufacturing a product, let's just use t-shirts and like, you're waiting for the ship to come in and deliver the t-shirts and you like, can't do anything. You can't get them off the ship. Customs is, is like screwing you around. You can't get them that like lack of that lack of ability to control the means of production from beginning to end, like kills me. Um, so that was extremely difficult because I was relying on another vendor 
to provide a service that I was unable to do. And that was really, really difficult within the business. And so what got you through it? You just, you just powered through it. <laughs> yeah. I just like stayed on the guy. Like I was just like yeah. every day. I remember, I'll never forget. I was in Boston uh, with my family and we were walking around um, town and I was like this fucking guy. Like I was sna- like, and my dad was like, yo, chill out, dude. And I'm like, nah, I can't chill out. Like I need to move this thing. Like I need, because I was getting paid in increments and like this guy was like literally holding the key to like my next <laughs> step. And I was just like, no. <laughs> I will like, I will call this guy every minute of every day for the rest of my life until he finishes this. And it was just like incessant, like consistent, like, yo, are you doing it right now? Are you doing it right now? When's it gonna be done? And just like hammering him, like relentless yeah. was how I got through it. You just, just hammered, I love it. I, right. that's, that's like my thing. And like, I've actually been talking about it on Instagram lately is like, it's like, if you, when someone, when someone like pushes me to a point where I like, I give them enough, and then they don't hit, I, like, you don't want to know me, man. Like, I'm going to be yeah. all in your shit. And if I, if I already paid you, or if, like, my the key to my freedom is in your hands, like, you're not going to lose. Like, <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> like, I'm going to well, be. fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, like, nice. I, will be, I will be in your, in your gym. And, and, and this is the thing. is like, it's not like I was just going crazy on this guy. Yeah. He says it's going to be done. It's not done. Yeah. Hey, you said it, dude. Like, what the fuck? I didn't say it. You said it. So I was just like, oh. like so I, I hate that so much. Like, I can't stand that. That's like probably my greatest pet peeve of all is like when someone says they're going to do something and then doesn't do it or doesn't do it on time or whatever. It's just like, come on, man. I didn't, I didn't say you had to do it by then. Like, you said that. So that yep. kills me. Kills me. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's interesting. And in that, you know, cause I feel like you've worn all the hats in your business and you've developed it yourself and, and built it that way. And that was a time when you kind of had to outsource and, and have kind of bring someone on your team to do something that you, it wasn't in your wheelhouse. Yep. So, you know, back to talking about Armin, you know, Armin is top DJ mm-hmm. and he's got a whole team of people doing marketing for him, booking for him. He's got an agent, all of that. So, um, I'd love to ask you kind of what your advice is for artists that are wearing all the hats. I mean, you know, me and Anthony, we're creating the music, we're promoting the music, we're doing the social media, the marketing, the booking, the, all of that. Yes. We're in the process of, you know, first step is booking agent for us, but how do you transition out of, because be it art, be it web development, any, all businesses are really the same. So how do you transition from wearing all the hats to, <laughs> getting some off your load so that you can. It, I don't necessarily think that that is the goal. Okay. It's that's not it because you're relying on someone else to operate and control the means of production for you, which is not the answer. I think that the short answer is that entire question and the, 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 the everything of that question can be summarized in a single thought, which is creating value for other people is the answer to every question all of the time. Value creation for others is how you make it happen. Like Armin and like, I'm not, I'm not a big history buff on Armin, but like this guy, from what I understand was never like a, like a main stage DJ. He was a radio DJ. And what he did was he made radio shows. And that is a, that is what I would refer to as a sellable unit. Here is the, it's the beginning of the show. The show ends. I can consume this in the car. I can consume on the way home at the gym, whatever. Mm -hmm. He was creating a sellable unit that created value to other people. And the value that he created to the listeners where they got to hear a bunch of new music. They heard new artists that they liked. They got to, it, it was enjoyment. It created value for other people. It wasn't like, how do I be the biggest DJ? And, and even now, like, He's creating value for the people in the audience because they're just like, every time I go to an Armin show, it's sick. It makes me feel this way. It makes me dance this way. It's a sellable unit. It is a value creation for others. That is the answer to every question all of the time. How do you create value for others? And it's not about you. It's about them always. It's not about me. It's not like, how do I create this web development company? It's not. It's how do I make other people money? How do I make them get freedom? 
because I will get freedom by giving them freedom. It is, that is the answer. I've, I've thought about this more, more time than I can imagine. It is the answer to all questions. It's like, if you're ever broke, if you're ever, if I'm not making money this month, if I'm, if my revenue is down, it's just like, why is it down? You're not making enough value for other people. That is the answer 100% of the time to all questions. That is the answer. How do you, why are you not making more value for others? And if you want to get, if you want to get your music out, it's not about your music. It's about their value. Yeah. And the feedback is the other thing. Like, that's one thing that I used to never, I was like, nah, they just don't know. Dude, feedback is the thing. Like feedback is such a thing. It's like, I love Shark Tank. They, uh, Lori always talks about, Lori Grenier on Shark Tank always talks yeah. about, they're like, my, no one likes my product. And she's like, did you focus group it? Like you could put this in front of 12 people and they'll be like, this sucks. And it's just like feedback is the thing like that I used to never, I used to not value. And now responsiveness to feedback has been huge for me. And like every single thing that I've done in recent years that people have been like, dude, has been as a result of feedback and me and me and me feeding back into that. Like, because like, for example, like my Instagram videos, my, my take naps Instagram videos, the reason that I do those is because at the very, very beginning, I got an explosive response for the first one that I made, like 10 people messaged me, more people than I had messaged me in the previous months. They're like, that was funny. And I was like, okay, feedback, value creation. They, it created value for them. It wasn't boosting me. It was creating value for them. It's all about them. The feedback was the whole key. And like to this day, I get messages on Instagram where people are like, don't stop. And it's just like, dude, I can't stop because the feedback is the answer. Cause it's just like, if you're creating value for them, like, like my friend Connie posted the other day, she's like at the end of a long day, like these videos, like, like make my day at the end of the day. Like I had a stress last day and I got to get to watch you like zip around and like penguin dance around your, around your house. That's hilarious. And that's, value creation for others that's the whole thing it's like the videos aren't about me gas in my like gas in my own book it's about it's about value creating for other people that has been the key to everything that i've ever done that has reached any level of success i love that so create value and get feedback <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and I, honestly, that's what we want people to do in in this group though the art of choosing heart group is post your stuff get feedback from other artists in other industries, from business on, you know? And take it and, yeah. and use it because yeah. feedback is no good if you don't adapt. And like most people think that they know everything and like just, I do too, like we all think that. But the reality is, is like that honest feedback, the, the, the lack of filter of, of people, people giving you feedback simply because they want to. Um, is like of infinite value. And if you, if you don't acknowledge it or respond to it or adjust as a result, they're just not going to tell you, they're going to be like, yo, good job. Yeah. And that's it. And like that, like my high school football coach told me something that like, will stick with me for the rest of my life. I was a, I think I was a junior, I think, or no, I was a sophomore and I was on the, I was at the, at the JV varsity practice and he was like riding me. And I was like, bro, like, why are you always on my back, dog? Like, why are you fucking with me? Like, he'd be like, you got to get lower. Like, you got to hit the gym more. Like, why are you not at the weight room? Like, why, how come you left at four and not 430? Like, what are you doing? And I remember being like, coach, like, why are you, like, why are you always on my back? Dude? And he was just like, he was like, because I know that you could do better. And he's like, it's the day that I stop riding you that you know that I gave up. He's just like, I'm on you because I know that you could be a varsity lineman next year. Like, you could start varsity lineman as a junior next year but you're not going to get there unless I dog you now. He's like, he's like, uh, and I don't remember who he was talking about. But he's like, you know, like, you know, Billy over there. He's like, I gave up on Billy. Like you could have that position. You know what I'm saying? He was just like, you could have I just that. Hope Billy's not watching. <laughs> well, there was, that wasn't even, a, that's not a person. I know, I know. I'm kidding. Yeah, but I was like, it was just like, it was profound. And it was just like the, him riding me was the reason like showed me that he knew that I could get there. And that was like, that was the whole thing. And, and so that's kind of like, like if you give feedback to someone and they just like dog what you're doing, you gotta be like, yo, it would have been easier for them to not say that. Like if you put out a song and the people are like, yo, that song sucks, or it's like too long, or it's too short, or it's too loud, or it's too this, or it needs more of this. If you're like, nah. the next time they hear a song from you, they're gonna be like, good job, man, like cool song. Because 
you, you need that unfiltered feedback and they need to know that the value that they're trying to give you is being reciprocated in action because it like, because the true, the true, the true indicator of whether something is valuable is the market. The market is the market. The market is the answer to all questions. The reason businesses work is because of the market. I love that. Well, and that's why we love having you around. <laughs> you're an un you're, you're full of unfiltered. We don't need the sugar coating bullshit. Just, yeah. you know, tell it like it is. Yeah. So, I mean, well then would you say that, that that's kind of what got you from, you know, side gigs, paying the bills and starting your business to business full time was the value the hustle, I mean, which all of it together, is there one piece? Is it back to the value I'm guessing? I think that what I've always tried to do is be the business person that I wish other people were to me and be the value creator that I wish other people provided me. Like, okay. I don't want to find, I don't want to find multiple vendors. I don't want to find, I don't want to find, like, I don't want to find a guy that does closets and a guy that does floors and a guy that does paint and a guy that does lawn care. I wish there was a guy that did all of it. I wish that I could rely on a single source that could provide me value stretched across all of it. So when it comes to the web, it's like, I don't just build websites. I can help you with the branding. I can help you with the content writing. I can help you with the graphic design. I can help you turn it into Instagram. I can help you market it by ads. I try to be, I try to be a solution provider. I try to be a problem solver. So, the key has always been, again, like responding to feedback. Like what do people need right now? What do they say that they need? What, what, what is the market telling me? Um, what is the market telling me that it needs and responding to that and being, and being the vendor or being the provider that they, um, that they, they want that like, cause people, I always tell people like, you, like people want to hire you. They like, they want to pay you. It's up to you to convince them not to. And like, like, I don't want to have a meeting with 10 web developers. They don't either. They don't want to tell you what they're looking for and then tell 10 other people. They want you to be the guy or the girl. They want you to be that person. And they would, they hate to go elsewhere and find somebody to do this and somebody to do that. They hate the specialization sucks because it's just like, ah, oh, I just wish I could have like one trustworthy cat that could do all this or do most of it or connect the dots, manage the projects, provide the solution, save me the time, create the value for me. And really like that is the, that's the game. So me thinking about that when I enter a meeting or approach a client or deal with them is like, how do I solve their problems? And it's always like, what is the problem that you're seeking to solve? And like, here's how I can solve it. I love, um, I think what I love most about what you said though, is that, that people want to pay you. They, it's not, they want to hire you. They want to pay you. It's, it's on us to, to make them think otherwise. So, yes, cause that's want. a totally, that's a totally different mindset though, to enter the agreement with, you know, it's like, they want to hire me. They want to buy my art. Yes. I'm just going to give them a reason to not pay for it. That's right. They so. want it. They want to buy it. And it's just like, they want to buy it if it provides them value. Like art, art is a challenge. It's a challenging thing. And, and like, yeah. it's, it's, it's difficult because it's like, it's like, I created it. Therefore it's, I'm, I have emotional connection to it. Therefore I perceive that it has value, but it doesn't have value unless somebody assigns value to it. Yeah. Just because I build a website doesn't mean that it's valuable. It's only valuable if it solves the problem that they were seeking for me to solve. If the art doesn't solve something for me, is it valuable just because it's created? That's kind of the thing is like, if I make a product and nobody buys it, is it a good product? No, just because I made it doesn't mean that it's valuable. It's only valuable if it's assigned value to others. If I'm more willing to part with this $20 bill in exchange for what you're giving me, it's more valuable than the 20, that's when you get the 20. If it's not as valuable, I'm not gonna give this to you. So it's just like, that's why art is challenging because it's just like, how do you create the value? Like you create the value by, and here's the, but here's the, here's the, the hidden secret about art that, that I think is what makes it so magical and it's different than business. In business, well, I guess in business and in art, you always have to execute. Like I always have, like I, my, I'm only as good as my last project. The thing about art though, is like, it's more of this emotional connection, which means that if you get me, you have me forever. That's the thing. It's like, 
you can you can captivate me forever. Whereas like in business, it's a lot more difficult because there's not as much emotion. It's like selling commercial real estate versus selling residential real estate. Residential real estate, like I gotta live in here. This is my life. Like you're gonna see your kids grow up in here. Like I'm gonna cook dinner in here. People are gonna see me in here. I'm gonna have parties in here. This is gonna be my life. Commercial space is like there's another box over here and there's another box over here. It's 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 very black and white. And it's kind of like that with art. It's like like business is the commercial real estate. It's just a box. It's just whether or not that box can provide if you can sell more t-shirts out of this box than this box, I'm gonna sell them out of that box. I don't care. It's not as emotional. Whereas like a residential like a home is different. It has that emotion. So that's the thing about art that makes it special is that like, it's harder to break through, but when you break through, like you have my whole everything, like you have, you have the key to my soul, you know, like, like bass nectar, like, that, like that music. It's just like, yo, this dude cracked into my like universe. And it's just like, no matter, unless, if he puts out something, now if he, if he doesn't feel the way that he feels and he doesn't continue to execute, I won't listen to the new stuff, but I'll listen to the old stuff forever. Cause it's like, once it's been created and it's there, it provides me value eternally. I'll dance to it till I die. So it's just like, that's kind of like the secret back end upside of art is that like, you got me, like I'm locked because I like, it, it's like part of my existence where like, as much as I want to think that a website or anything else is like part of someone, it's not in the same way. So it's yeah. just like, that's kind of like the secret upside of art that like, once you crack through it, you can like, you could have all of me. Whereas like with business, it's like not always as much. Yeah. But it, it's like that, that blessing and curse type thing, because it's, it is a blessing that when you, when you grab hold of someone's emotions like that, that you're, like you said, they'll never let go. But, and curse isn't quite the word I want to use, but that's just, you know, the phrase we use these days, but it, it's just difficult to, to break through to someone like that. Unless that's just the lie I'm telling myself. Well, <laughs> everything's difficult. Well, I, I think that, that, you know, yin and yang, everything is yin and yang. I was, uh, I was at my good buddy's house the other day and he has two twin girls that are seven years old. And I remember when he first found out that he was having twins, it was like, oh, dude, that's twice, that's twice the diver. Like, boo, <laughs> that's, that's intense, dude. Talk about, talk about doubling down on everything. Um, and, and at the very beginning, as he, you know, as he kind of alluded to, it's like, obviously that was more challenging to have two than to have one. But here they were seven years old and we're chilling at the kitchen table, like talking, having dinner, and they're off in the other room playing with each other. And it was just like, they have a buddy built in. It's like, it was hard then, but it's a win now. It's like all the, all of the struggle late. You're like, Oh, like, thank God. Like imagine if there was a seven year old just sitting there with a bunch of lame adults, like yapping about who gives, you know, it was just like, that's the kind of the beauty of it is just like all of the struggle and like the thing and like the gum store. I remember thinking to myself when I was on the floor scraping that gum, I was like, I can't wait to tell this story one day about how like, about how like I used to scrape this gum, you know, I'm just like, this is it. Like, this is chapter seven Yeah. in, in the game, you know, like yeah. this is, this is the type of story that everybody has. Nobody is like, Oh yeah. Like I showed up and then like I hit it. Like that's a very, that's rare. It doesn't happen like that. So it's like, I just remember thinking to myself, like, this is chapter seven. Like, in the yeah. book. this is where I struggle. This is where the struggle was. And like, here it is in this, in this audio recording, like maybe that brings value to someone. And like, I've told that story many times and I'll tell it forever. And it's and a like, great story. And like, whenever I reach whatever level of whatever, continuing on the, in the, in the path and momentum, like I love that story. And so it's like, sometimes you almost gotta like, not like do it for the story, but realize that it's like, this is part of the process. And like, right. that's the beauty of it all. It's like, had you hit it earlier, you wouldn't be as good as you're going to be. If, if had you just hit first, first album, first track, first tour, first show, and you just blasted the fuck off, you'd have been like, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the, I'm the girl, I'm the shit, I'm the best. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that you got to be better. You know, like you would just be like, I'm look at me. Like I'm like, I'm boy genius. And it's like, that's why, like, every time I get beat down, I try to remember that it's like, this is part of like betterment. And like every time I've been like absolutely blasted to like my absolute last shred of like belief, I always remember like, it can't go below this. Like this is the bottom and like, it's only going to go up. And like now like cool, good. And as soon as I have that inflection point where I'm like absolutely beat to shit, that's when I'm like, all right, 
like whatever you do next will be the greatest thing. And like, oh, and across the whole span of my life, I can literally track back like super, super low points and all of my like greatest, most momentum building, like, like moonshot hits have come at the moment where it was like the absolute shittiest. And like, I've heard that story before, but man, is that true? And recognize it. That's why like being low is like a secret gift. It's like being at the bottom just makes you be like, all right, like it makes you, it makes you filter out all non-pertinent items and be like, fuck all of this. Like, it's only this, this is the only thing that will make me value. I just got to show up and scrape this gum and I'll get $130. Go do it. That's it. I don't need to be like, why is my business not working? I just go get 130 bucks. And like, you just bought the day. You got lunch now, you got money to buy this and get back at it. And like that, that, man, the, the bottom is like where all the good, where all the good shit is at because it makes you filter out all the trash that clogs your mind that you think is important that actually is not. I love that. That's like huge. And, and it's, it's staying present enough in that bottom, you know, when your shit's not selling, when you're not taking off to still just like you said, keep creating, keep adding value because if as artists, if we don't keep creating, then it just gets bottled up and nothing comes out and they, and, and you don't create space for the masterpiece to come out. You know, and that's why you just got to keep, I, man, I love that. At the bottom is, is where it's at. Yeah, it really is. And it's like, the other thing too, is like something that I've been learning a lot lately is like, it's about volume. It's about pushing volume. It, it, it like, I always was like, it's gotta be perfect. <laughs> all, the, all those things that I tried to make perfect over the years ended up failing. Every single thing that I was like, nope, I can't release it until it's perfect. Every single thing that I ever did like that was shit. Every other thing that I just pushed out, push it out, make it imperfect. All of those things work the best. Like I was at this conference this past weekend and, uh, and it, was, it was this huge like, motivational conference in, in Miami and Grant Cardone was a speaker, a huge real estate investor, like a uh, hundred million dollars, has, owns his own jet, guys like mega. And one of the things that just was like the funniest shit is he pushed out this book that had tons of spelling errors that he self published. And he's like, he's like, people always say to me, Grant, there's, there's 150 misspelled words in here. And he's like, yeah, but that's a best seller. Best seller. Best seller. Best seller. He's like, I don't give a shit if it had these misspelled words. I pushed it out and it's a best seller with the words. Who gives a shit? The transaction happened. It's like, it doesn't have to be perfect. And he was just like, I could have edited that book for another nine months and made it perfect. Run on sentences, misspelled words, periods in the wrong place, best seller. And I was just like, nah, like perfect, <laughs> perfect fucking, like seriously. And like at the very beginning, I couldn't tell you how many things I had like stored up. Like, I don't want to release it. It's not perfect. I don't want to release it. Dude, if I could go back, slap myself and just be like, dude, push it out. And like how many, my, I had, I have a, I had a buddy when I was a kid that used to make beats and he would make beats like 75% of the track time and then like never finish them. And I was like, but I remember thinking back, like if this dude was just pushing out these beats this whole time, like imagine, how, imagine how big his cat, his catalog would be. And like, talk about spinning your wheels. Like I used to do that when I was younger, like building, when I build websites and even to this day, it's like, you're just like, oh, I don't know. I can't push this out. The, the lesson that I learned when I turned 30 was like, dude, you're going to die. Like it's coming. Like you're about to die. Like you got however many years left. Like this, you don't have time for it to be perfect. Yeah. Push it the fuck out. And like Jesse Itzler, I saw speak at this conference, the fucking man, like the man, I would well, encourage He's here anybody. in Atlanta. He's here dude, in Atlanta. The man, absolute man, the sickest shit. I, I love diving into his content. That guy is the truth. And like, Every single thing that I've said here has been a regurgitation of some input that someone else gave me. Me listening to him provided me value that I could regurgitate out to you and whoever. That was the whole thing. And like, that's why consuming successful people's mindset just builds your, like the sentence that I say is like, here's a sentence from Gary Vee. Here's a sentence from Grant. Here's a sentence from this guy. Here's a sentence from Jesse Itzler. Here's a sentence from the book that I read back in the day. Here's a sentence from my buddy, Dan, like all of these things create the beautiful mesh that is like all of it. So it's just like people like him, like Jesse Itzer, I was like, this dude is the shit. And he, he was just like, just push it out. Like push it out, make it happen. Like you're going to die, dude. 
And like Gary Vee talks about the same thing, like just push it out. And that's, that has been, that has been something that like my Instagram videos, for example, and in its own way, it's like, it's, I'm having a good time with it. I was just like, fuck it, dude. Like, fuck it. I, I said to this person yesterday, like, I don't want to die with all these jokes in here. Like, yeah. I need to get this out. <laughs> I, cause, cause and I was just thinking about the other day, like if I died tomorrow, they would be playing my fucking Instagram videos at my funeral. Like, and everybody would be dying. Cause I'm like, look at this, look at the psycho guy, you know? And I was just like, <laughs> That's the type of shit that is like the magic. It's just yeah. like pushing out things that would otherwise be like lost. We spend so much time like bombing stuff around in here and it is all for nothing. And like, I'm the first person that gets stuck in his head all the time. And like, dude, the, the greatest thing as of late for me has just been like absolute push of all things all the time. And just like, let it be. Like the worst that could happen is someone dogs you. And even if they do good, like they took time to dog you, great you're going to watch it and then you're going to tell me that I suck. Like you just spent two minutes, like perfect. And, and like Gary Vee talks about that. Like people leaving negative comments, like leave them dude. Like, yeah. You know, like I can't wait for those, you know? So yeah, <laughs> like just push it out. That's like, well, the- and I mean, and what's meant to stick will stick and what's not doesn't. And I mean, like you said at the beginning, one of your, one of the reasons you love web development is you can move it around. You could change it later. It's like, you know, I mean, and, and you can, when you get stuff out, it puts it on the canvas or on the screen or on whatever the surface is. And instead of having the perspective of internalizing it and looking at it here, it's out there. And then you can do whatever needs to be done to it. And sometimes there's nothing. Some just, like you said, just get it out. Yeah. Cause, so, cause it doesn't, you, because like, that creates the feedback loop that, or that creates the feedback. That's how you get people to, to react and engage with it. It's just like, we always, perfection is an illusion. Like there is no perfection. Well, and people, imperfection is relatable. Anthony just, just shared that with, I mean, that people in this online world we're living in and this influencer, this, and it, they want authentic. And so that imperfection is what keeps the human behind the screen there yeah oh yeah exactly and like that's and the funny thing is is that like we all inherently appreciate that more than something that's perfectly polished up with a shiny red bow like that's it's like it's not how you thought right that's another thing that i realize all the time is like it is not how you think it is it's how it's it's what the market thinks that it is. It's how everyone else thinks that it is. It's how they react. If you expect people to pay you to do something, you got to be worried about them, not you. That has yeah. been like such a key thing for me lately. Is just like it's about them. Yeah. And like the more them that you think about, the more you you get. I love that. Yeah. Well, um, as we uh, start to wrap it up, I've still got a few more questions. If if you've got the time. Yeah. Um. So if you've, what would be your one, I mean, cause we've covered a lot of incredible value in here. Um, but if you could give other artists, healers, business owners, our audience, one piece of advice who might be struggling to make ends meet, you know, to, to turn their artistry into a thriving business, what would the one piece of advice be? This can be, you know, a practice that you recommend, a book, an outsourcing, I mean, in it, but if it was one piece, Well, I think that everything that I've said thus far about like the pushing it out, the volume, the the lack of the not imperfection, the feedback, the creating value for others. I think that that is all of it. But I think that one thing that one thing that I do, um, one thing that I do that uh, I wish that I sorry, my like live stream and it just distracted me um, is 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 like it's your fault. We always blame external factors, others, whatever. Um, It's your fault that it's not there. Stop assigning blame to other people. It's your fault. And that kind of thing has made me realize that like every time I complain about why something is not what it is, it's because I'm not executing at the highest level. It's because I didn't work hard enough this month. It's because I didn't think about other people enough this month. It's my fault. And, and complaining 
it's something that like we all do and like I do it sometimes and like the, peers, the, the people that I find myself complaining to the most is like my parents and I just like vented them all the time but sometimes after I talk to them I'm like dude you're just like bitching about something that like is within your control like this is within your control bro like you it's your fault and we're always just like blaming like the market uh, the, the economy or whatever and it's like no it's you and it's like you just haven't figured out how to get what you believe you deserve to get. And like the blame is here. Like look at yourself more than the external and quit with the blame because that's what I did. And I still do sometimes like we all, everyone struggles with that, but it's like take responsibility that your position is your responsibility. And the reason that you're there is because you haven't learned enough to get you to not be there. You haven't done enough to execute, to make it so that that's not your situation. It, it is us. It is you. It is I, it is my fault that I'm not here. And like, that was one thing about, about like business ownership that kind of made me realize it's like, it's not his fault or her fault that they didn't do this right. I'm the business owner. Like the buck stops with me. I'm the guy. It is my fault. If my employee is out doing something that's not right, it's my fault for letting him be in a position to do that. And like, it doesn't mean that you it doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes or that or that there won't be slip ups because they're going to be. But like, it is your fault. Go fix it. Like most things are fixable. All things are fixable. Like there is no like unless you unless you died as a result. Like it's fixable. It's a solvable problem. And I think that 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 would be the best advice I think that I could that, that I could give is just like yourself. And, and yeah solve it because it's it is solvable and all and every great success has come from somebody doing that first and being like dude and like creating the solution for themselves um you know people are like oh you know their uncle gave them money or they got this or they got lucky or whatever else but it's like nah it's all about self like it's super easy to drain cash just because someone gave you a million dollars doesn't mean that you didn't do something great with it. If you turn a million into 2 million, you did something just yeah. the fact that, that was your start. Okay. And like, and, other, and the other thing too, is like being, being enriched by other people's success has been another thing that has been tough for me. It's like, I'm just like, why is this fucking guy like killing it? And I'm not. And like, I struggle with that all the time, but it's like, dude, like your journey is your journey. And like, that's the thing is like, it's, it's like this because it's supposed to be like this. It's like this because it has to be like this. You had twins because later it was going to be like, oh, that's yep. it. Like it, it, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it had to be for you to get to the top. It had to be like that. You had to, it had to suck. It had to be the worst website you ever built. It had to be the worst song you ever released. It had to be for you to get better. Otherwise, you would have just thought you were the shit. I love it. When it's, and it's it's funny in today's day and age because it's like it's what like what we were talking about before we went live with the technology shifting and making it yes on the one hand maybe easier to get our stuff out there or like there's so many different ways to make money but then on the flip side because of this technology we're seeing other people quote make it faster or other and there's this it's like it's like a double edged sword it's like we we see that there's more opportunity to make money doing anything, but then we also see other people making money doing anything and, and comparison and, and all of that. So comparing, comparing is a comparing is definitely a problem because like, and that's another thing that like I had struggled with as well. It's just like, but look, like the things that we do that make up our life are more, are, are more at play. And when you see what somebody is choosing to feed the world, you don't know the back of that. Like, like Gary Vee, he always talks about this. And I love his, I love his stuff. Is he like, he talks about how people are like, yo, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. And he's like, dude, I didn't take a day off from 25 years old to 34. I didn't go on vacation. I didn't buy a new watch. I didn't buy a nice car. I literally worked seven days a week. 10 hours a day for 10 years. And it's like, do you work seven days a week, 10 hours a day? Cause I don't, I went to, you know, I went to a concert, you know, a couple weeks ago, like I could have been working. So it's like, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, we don't know, we don't know the backstory. We don't know, like, did someone have a tough 
upbringing that inspired them to do this. Like we don't, we know, no one knows. Like the, the depth of people's story is like your story. It's like, no one's ever going to know what's really there. So it's like, it's super easy to just be like, look at all of this. It's like, you don't even know what yep. they have to sacrifice to be there. So it's like, that's the other thing is like, that's a, that's like a toxic thought that um, is, is, is not, is not serving anyone well. Yeah. It's a waste. It's a waste. Yeah. Well, um, if you can give us a little insight into your life, I'd love to know what your three non-negotiables are. Like, what is a day in the life of, of Brett Napoli look like? Like the three things that are a must in your day. You mean like just, just being alive? Yeah, I mean, it can, be, it can be business related, it can be, you know, meditation, it can be reading, any, what are your three non-negotiables? It's tough because I don't feel like I have much of like a routine, so to okay. speak. Like, all right, I got to do this or I got to do that. I don't really feel like that. But I think one thing that I try to remember that is hard for me to remember sometimes is to just be like grateful and like you, yeah. be thankful that like that, like my parents are the shit that like, you know, that I have like good people around me that like. I look the way that I look, that I have both hands, that I have both feet, that, you know, that I'm healthy, that I have a, like the hair on my head, like that I wasn't born in Uganda, like no, no, like no shade on Uganda, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just super thankful that I'm here now. I'm just like super incredibly thankful. And it's hard to forget about, it's, it's easy to forget that sometimes, but that would be like the one, that would be one of the three things. Other than that, um, I think that one thing that is kind of like constantly on my mind is just like betterment and not necessarily in one thing or the other, but like, how do I get better tomorrow, today? Um, like one thing that, again, like my high school football coach was the truth. Like so many nuggets came from this dude that literally like I think about to this day. And one thing he said is like, he's like every single day you get better or something or you get worse at it. You never stay the same. You get better at it or you get worse at it. You never stay the same. He's like, if you didn't go to the gym today, you got weak. If you didn't practice this today, you got worse. If you didn't, if you weren't thankful today, you became less thankful. Like every single thing, like if you do something that was good, you were, you're worse today, today than you were yesterday. And that was something that like kind of sticks with me a lot is like just remembering that, that like, it's every day. And like uh, at that conference, um, there was this guy, his name, his name escapes me right now. Um, but he wrote, he wrote 82 books and he's like one of the largest business coaches in the world. And he's like, he's like, people always ask me, John, how did you write so many books? And you know what I say to him? Like that. He's like, I just write them. And he's like, you know how I write them? He's like every single day. And I wish I had, I wish I could say it exactly how he said it, but he was just like every day, I, every day I read, Every day I write, every day I think, and every day I get feedback from others. He's like, Christmas, I read, I write, I get feedback from others, I think. New Year's Day, birthday, holiday, vacation, I read, I write, I get feedback from others, I think. And he's just like, every day. I write every day. And he kept saying it every day, every day. And I was just like, and you're just like, how does somebody write 82 books? Every day. He writes Every day, every day I read, every day I think, every day I write, every day I get feedback from, feedback from others. And I was just like, dude, because it's like, could it be that simple? Yup. And it's like, if you, if you don't do it every day, like I don't do, I don't do this every day. Like I, there are days where I'm like, I gotta, re, I gotta refresh. And sometimes I'm just like, how did they do that? But every day. So like, that's something that I've been thinking a lot about lately is just like the everydayness, the everyday, the everyday, the everyday. So that well, would be- I mean- Gratitude and betterment are good, good everyday practices for sure. Yeah. Like I, I just like, I feel like I have just like an unquenchable thirst for like more to see like what I'm really truly capable of. That's kind of it. And like one of the things that really drives and motivates me is to like, is to see how high I could get and see like how far I could go. And I almost feel like it would be an injustice to my life to not do that. Like if I'm, if I hit the lotto tomorrow, you better believe I would be doing this still. Like I would go and I would find ways to reinvest it into this. I would find ways to find ways to make more. It, it, 
like I have this unquenchable thirst. Like work, work to me is not really like work like that. It's just about like how big could I get? Like Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins, like has this has this uh, charity where he has fed like two million people or something. And it's just like if this guy could feed two million people, like that's sick. And like over the course of this guy's life, imagine like so. It's yeah. just like the single the single power of us is like infinite, expandable, like mega, mega, like ridiculous. And, um, and I almost feel like to not quest after the greatest thing that I could do would just be like a disservice to like life as a whole. Like, dude, you had this and you just fucked off or you like made money and then just sat on an island somewhere, like you dicked off, like Elon, is the truth like honestly i feel like elon is like the may, quite possibly like the greatest american hero to ever live like that guy is a legend billion dollars could have done nothing and like work in 12 hour days like shredding it like take a lesson from fucking elon like that guy is the truth and i have stupid respect for him because like that's the type of thing that like like that's the type of example like the way that I got goosebumps right now. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's like the way that the way that I feel about like that guy and like how he does that is like, bro, like you, this guy is like, if you don't do as good or better than him, like, what are you doing? Like, why? Why is he? What does Elon have that we don't have? Nothing. Nothing. We're all the same. Like, oh, he he programmed this when he was put. So what? Like, so we did other cool shit. Like, there's a lot of things that we do that he can't do and vice versa. Like, everyone has this unique, like, magical ball. And it's just, like, to, to think that, like, oh, like, I can't because of that. All the greatest people ever are just people. So it's, like, to not quest after, like, the absolute pinnacle of your possibility, to me, is, like, a disservice to your, like, to, like your life. Well, and, and then when you think about the day and age that we live in, um, like we were talking about before, <clears throat> you know, the whole, our grandparents, they only had one option. Yeah. Now, how many options do we have? Yeah, all options, every option, like the internet, thank God, like, thank God for the internet, thank whatever, the Gaia, <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, like, what a, like, what a magical thing we have, like, how, how dare we squander this, like, Dude, we have every, like we have the whole universe at like our fingertips, and it is like that's why I said earlier, like when I first saw it, I was just like, "That's it, bro! Like that is the thing, infinite, yeah, infinite ocean, infinite, like it really you know, is." Internet I mean, is truth. And like you were, you were telling like, again before we we went live, just yeah, grandfather had to be a stone mace, like just went to work every single day. Yep. That's what they did. And they still built great shit. I mean, we exist because of our ancestors, because they showed up every day. Mm -hmm. But now here we have all these possibilities. Yeah. And yeah. And we complain and we complain about it. <laughs> We're like, I didn't get enough likes on Instagram. It's like <laughs> That's why I'm not successful. Yeah. Like <laughs> blame, 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 like blame. Like, <laughs> it, it, there, yep. like there it is, man. Like that's it. So and again, the, the yin and yang too is it's just like, it's like that because it's gotta be like that. It's supposed to be like that. Like it, you're supposed to be low right now because you found the greatest thing. Like um, when I first moved to Florida, and this was kind of like a life changing moment for me is like when I first moved to Florida, I was like draining my savings down. And I, and I actually wrote a blog post about this on beatapply.com way back in the day. And I was just like sitting in my, like, in my bedroom in this like, on this air mattress that had a hole that had a leak in it that every day when I woke up, I was like on the ground and I was just like, dude, like you failed, bro. Like this, like you, you, you tapped out, like, this is it. Like you, you, it's over. Like it, this is the end of the road. And I like cried and like went to sleep. And I remember just being like, dude, like you wasted it. You gave it a shot. You gave it 10 years, whatever. You got no money. Like you failed. When I woke up the next day and I wrote, I wrote a blog post about this, um, that I'll send to you. And, I woke up the next day and I was like, I was like, no, like I'm not, I didn't come this far to fucking stop now. Like I came this far and now because of the, because of my mattress, like fucking pussy, like go do something. And dude, I went online and I started Googling, like 
how to make money online, how to grow my life, like how to improve, how to improve. And I, and I had always built websites, but I was hand coding them and it was hard as shit. It would take me 40, 50, 60 hours to build a website. And I discovered this tool called WordPress. And it was, and it's, it is a content management system for building websites. And I discovered it that day, that morning that I woke up like with the fucking tears dry on salty on my face, I discovered fucking WordPress. And I had known about it before, but I didn't know what it was capable of. And I was like, really WordPress? So I started diving in and like literally a fucking million dollars of revenue has come from that shit because I was like at the, sh at the bottom, the absolute hole. And I remember I went, I'll never forget. I like went in my backyard and I got on the phone and I called my dad and I was like, dad, I fucking, I got it. Like I hit it. Like I fucking found the answer to it all. Like this is it. I fucking found it. And I was just like fucking WordPress. That's what I'm going to do. And what that tool allowed me to do was it allowed me to build a website faster, better, and sell it for more money in a fucking 10th of the time, a 10th of the fucking time I could build the same website better, faster, stronger, and sell it for, for, for more money. And like literally my whole life fucking shifted like that just from in an instant. And I was just like, this is fucking like, this is game changing. So I, I flew out to, um, I flew out to this conference in Las Vegas with my, with my buddy. And I went to this conference that Matt Mullenweg, the founder of WordPress was speaking at. And I just like, I was like, I'm going to fucking thank this guy. Like I'm going to find a way to fucking find this guy. And I'm going to thank him before I get out of here. And like, we went to this, uh, this like mixer, uh, whatever, whatever. And, um, everybody was trying to leave and I spotted him at like a lunch table, like off in the distance. And I'm like, I'm just going to fucking Hawkeye this guy for an hour until he gets up and walks away and is by himself. Cause I don't want to like roll up on him. And I was just like, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to cross him. And I'm going to just like, thank him. I didn't want a picture. I didn't want nothing. Cause I always believe in my head. Like I'll see you again. If it's meant to be like, I don't like, I've met Gary V the fucking man, every single person. Can I get a selfie? Can I get a selfie? Can I get a selfie? And I was like, I'm going to see you again. I'm going to, I'm going to make it. So I see you again. I'm not going to take a picture because I don't want the picture. I'm about to get it so that you want to take a picture with me, dog. Like, <laughs> so I, so he came across, I saw him walking to leave and I just like beelined it over and I was like, yo, kind of like came up on him. Not quick, but I was just like, look, I was like, I want to let you know, dude, that you changed my life. Like you are like responsible for everything. And this guy was like, yo, that's sick, man. Like, he was just like, thank you, bro. And, and I was just like, dude, like, I just had to tell, like, feedback, yeah. feedback. Yeah. yeah. Like, thank you, bro. And like, that's why that guy does it. You know, like that guy's got millions of dollars, but that's not what he wants. He wants that. And I'm not, I can't speak for the guy, but like, that's the shit that that guy wants. And like Gary Vee talks about all the time. That's what he's looking for. The admiration, the legacy, the, the, that, that just like, dude. Like Gary talks about, he's like, he's like, if I could throw everything away, he's like the email that I get from somebody that says like, I was about to commit suicide and I watched your content and I didn't, you know, he's like, that's, that's the whole thing. So it's like, I aspire to like that type of shit. That's the type of thing. Like that's real true magic. Like, fuck money. That shit is like real, like world changing, like world changing. Yeah. Fuck everything. Like you that's that is like the true quest and that's kind of why i'm like it is not about money it's it's about money don't get it twisted like it totally is it's an instrument hey a million like, dollars in revenue is a big fucking deal so hey that was over a long period of time i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pat myself on the back i got a long way to go but the point is is just that like the the value creation that he made for me and for millions of people is why he has buku cash Yep. The value that Gary Vee has created for me is why, you know, if that's the answer. It's about value for others. It's all about that. That is the whole, like the pinnacle of it all is that. And um, like learning that and, and knowing that that is the true mission um, has been, has been like massively eye-opening for me. But that story about WordPress and me like waking up that day and discover, discovering it, rediscovering it again um, was like inflection. On a deflated air mattress. Dude, yeah, and I wrote this blog post about it, and like I, I got in that moment, and I took a picture, and it's like I had my hairs all frizzed out, and I was just like smiling. I'm just like, this will be like the picture. That is the yeah. picture. This is my like Steve Jobs in a in a in a in a garage like moment, and it was just like me like beep, and I, it was like that morning that I that I discovered it, and like, and who knows where it'll take me 
and I'm not going to say like WordPress is the reason. It wasn't the, it wasn't, it, it didn't unlock my future. I unlocked my future. It was just the instrument in which I got from, from step one to step two. It's how I took one level up. And it's like, I, I, I got to give myself a lot of credit because I used the instrument, but like thankful for that guy for doing that, for making it free and open source. Like, dude, the man, like Matt Mullenweg, the fucking man, Jesse Itzler, the man, Gary B, the man, Grant Cardone, the man, those guys, like legend, Elon, a fucking God amongst men. We should take our lessons from them because, because that is like that admiration, the way that, the way that I feel about them and the way that, that other people feel about them, like that is true power. And like, yep. you can, you can move the way that people believe the way that people act like legendary talk about talk about like making your life you know one that is great like those yeah. guys do it so i aspire to that yeah well i love that well i won't keep you any longer i've got one final question um and oh and we have actually we have lots of questions in the facebook group oh, shit. Oh. Oh, yeah so um <laughs> we'll get we'll get we won't keep you too much longer but so the last question i've got for you before we dive into the to the q a's is as you know we're going live in the art of choosing heart facebook group so i think you've touched on it a little but i would love kind of a an all-encompassing what is the art of choosing heart mean to you well i think that life is art and you know because that's the thing I always loved I always loved the English class because we could write two different things and we could both get a hundred I, I and that was probably that was probably one of the reasons why I hated like math and science it was like if I didn't know that sodium plus whatever you know equals this I'm a failure or if I don't know that this multiplied by this is like if there's only one answer and that's it I love that I love, that's what I love about writing is like, we could both have two completely different perspectives and we could both get a hundred. Um, so the art, so the art of life, the way that you paint the masterpiece that is the way that you live in your existence. Um, I think that, I think that focusing on just doing great things, that's, that's really what it means to me is like realizing that like, you know, because what is heart anyways? Heart is the heart is the rhythm, the infinite rhythm, the hum of the universe. Like my buddy Dan said, like that's what your heart is. It's just a rhythm, and really, and really, we are all just vibrating matter anyways. So the heartbeat is the vibration is all things. So choosing heart to me just means that you recognize that this is all just a flowing, free flowing experience, and like how can you make it amazing? And how can you make it amazing for other people? Because that's the true return. It's like the greatest returns come by bringing value to other people. So remembering that has been super crucial and I will continue to reiterate it. And I always say, like I said on my, like on my Instagram yesterday, it's like, like when I say things, I'm saying them a lot to myself and like, it's, and like, I'm giving, I'm trying to give myself the value because like another one of my favorite quotes is like, be careful what you say because you are listening. Like, dude, legendary. And like my dad, my dad talks about it all the time. Like super, super sick advice. He's like, stop saying that. Like you're hearing yourself say that. Stop saying that. And so like super, super valuable, super valuable nuggets come from everybody. And like, that has been one thing that's been key is like, I'm, I'm talking to myself yeah. just as much as I'm talking to you guys. I don't, I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. I'm learning just like everybody else is. I'm just, I'm just trying to make it just have a good time and enjoy this and, and help other people enjoy it. I mean, and it's not like, I'm, I'm not like Mr. Give back. I'm not like Mr. Volunteer. I'm not, I, there are so many people that do so many amazing things like you, for example, like you do tremendous things. And there's things that you do that I'm just like, man, like this should be sick. Like you're out here, you're out here like donating your time and like being such a magical, like amazing person. Like you guys inspire me. And like just seeing other people do great stuff, like hits you here. And like my good buddy, Greg, like my buddy, Greg, the barber here in town, this guy is the fucking man. This dude goes out and cuts the homeless, cuts, gets haircuts to the homeless on his free fucking time, has two kids, runs a fucking business. This guy is the fucking man. And I, and I love him for that because it's just like, he doesn't have to do that. Nobody said anything about him doing that. He's just out there cutting it. And this dude inspires me because I'm just like, dude, I'm, I'm not giving anybody nothing. Well, I, well, I made some, like, 
seeing you guys and, and the magic stuff that you guys create and him is like, that is like, we, we have no idea how much our individual actions influence others. So it's like, like you guys have been an inspiration to me in so many ways. And like my boy, Greg, and like all, and all these people, like, it's just such a magical thing. And like, and like how thankful am I to you that you like made this happen. And that like, we have this recorded sick, man, like sick. Can't wait to watch this in 20 years. Like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like that, it, it's such a, what a, what a fucking good time this is. Like life is the shit. What a great time. It's so easy to forget so often, but this is the shit. This is the shit. I'm so happy to be fucking alive and to know people like you and just like all those people that I named and like all the people, that yet, all the people that we're yet to meet. Like sick, dude, sick. What a great Pure time. Excitement. Pure excitement. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Let me, let me see um, what kind of questions we've got. I'm going to look over at Anthony. Melissa's been really active. Okay. Um, uh, feel inspired. Um, we've got a lot of people. Melissa's feeling inspired. She said, damn, I may just be able to map my website today. She said, damn, I may just be able to map my website uh, today. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Do something. Take action. Someone anxious <laughs> about the web process. What's your best advice? Okay. So I asked, what do you mean by the web process? She Side said, design, flow, okay, for someone flow. that gets anxious about the web process, meaning like the site design, the flow of it, all of that, what's, what's your advice? Well, why, why are you anxious? That's a good, why, why is she anxious? Dude, <laughs> I mean, look, like I said, like, it's going to suck. The first thing you push is going to suck. I mean, what? But push it out. First song, did the first song that you make, was it epic? No. <laughs> Probably was horrible. Like was first, first logo I made. I remember. I remember when I first got when I first made my first graphic design. <laughs> like I made this graphic and I was like, do Like I put a filter on it and I was like, that's fucking sick. Saved it. It said like it said like Brett or Bnaps. I remember it said Bnaps and it was like the graffiti tool. I wrote Bnaps. I was like, that's fucking sick. And I saved it. And then like I put a blur on it and I was like, oh, that's fucking sick. And I saved that. And then I like made it red and I was like, oh shit. That's fucking sick, and I saved that. And like, I remember years later, I like I cracked into this hard drive, and I was looking at all these images that I saved. And I was like, bro, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what is that? Why? That's like that sucks, man. Like, that is that is not cool. Like, just because you created it doesn't mean it's good. So, the, the anxious, like, ask people, get feedback. Ask people like me. Ask people to give you guidance to help you to help you jump ahead. Like. Like we, we, we always think that we could like know it all, but man, invest in a little bit of money in, in leaping forward is like, the, is the best. Like I would say, I would say if you can't figure it out or if you struggle with it, like pay somebody for an hour of their time, put up 125 bucks, pay someone for an hour of their time and leap ahead. Cause the amount of time that's going to take you to drag through it sucks. Time is like, it's not infinite. That's the one thing that's not infinite is like you're running out of time. So I would say like, like quit being hung up. Sometimes we just, sometimes there's things that we're just not good at. Like, I don't know how to install a backsplash. I'm not going to try to install this backsplash. I know that my time is better spent doing other things. And like, as a result, yeah, it, was, it was a shitty experience, but like, now I learned. I love it. Next backsplash that I install or have installed is going to be better. And it's going to be better. It's going to be better. But the first one's going to suck, but like, I'm not going to live here forever. I remember I had a house in Waterbury, Connecticut and I, um, and I painted, uh, I painted the kitchen red and I thought it looked really cool. And then I remember just being like, man, this is like super sloppy. Like the corner is like, oh man, it's red. Like, oh, the kitchen's red. Like, did I fuck this up? And it's just like, bro, you're not going to live here forever. Like, it's just a kick. You can't, ah, ah. Like, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, dude. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So I would say just push it out and, and ask for advice and, I love and it. invest in yourself. Like pay, like pay people to help you leap ahead or just trudge through it. I mean, YouTube. Yeah. I mean, I mean serious self, self learn totally possible. Awesome. All the web development knowledge that I have, self-taught. I, I didn't okay. take any classes. I just went out and just like. Yeah. Do. Well, well, and I it would. I mean, well, and you love web. So I mean, I guess, and I don't know Melissa well enough to know, but it's like if if the, what? Oh, Mel, Mel Oliver. Okay, I'm used to knowing her as Mel. I know Mel very well. Okay, so web development isn't something that Mel wants to get into. So it may be more worth her time to pay someone to just do it. Of course, it is kind of fun to learn. Um, but yeah, so Mel, you got this, like you said, just, just trudge through if you need to. Um, I think Brett froze. Oh, there. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
Um, so I love that advice though. Yeah. Either, you know, just get it out there and then get feedback and go from there. So yeah. Like paying people to leap ahead is good. Yeah. I like that. Okay. We've got one more question. Um, what's the question? Um, I was curious on the feedback topic, um, like how you walk the line between adapting to the market in order to sell product versus creating a totally unique product that maybe the market doesn't know that it wants or needs, okay. but gonna, could fill, but, you know. Okay, I'm gonna repeat it so everyone can hear. So on the feedback topic, um, when, when receiving and applying the feedback, how do you walk the line between take, adapting, adapting to the market, to the market and, and kind of putting out what quote the market wants versus creating a completely unique product that, the market, doesn't, that the market doesn't even know they, they want. How do you, how do you, how do you do it? Or what's the, what's um, the, like, what, how do you know which feed, I guess it's, it's in terms of taking in feedback. Is there a trick to kind of knowing, Oh, this is feedback. I mean, yes, we want to take and respond and apply all feedback, but, yep. um, but let's say you're putting a product out there that you feel in your soul and in every vibration of your body is something the market needs that they don't even know yet. So consider your audience would be my answer to that. You know, okay. who are you getting? Are you there? Did he freeze in the live too? Okay. He'll be back in a second and then we'll wrap up. The feedback from. Okay. In real time. Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. Um, <laughs> I heard who, who are you, consider who you're getting the feedback from. Yeah, because like, you know, there are plenty of businesses out there that some of us are like, what? But are tremendous businesses. If you told me, if you told me 15 years ago when I was playing Counter-Strike in my, in my, uh, in my bedroom, that people could would be on a stage in an arena watching people play Counter-Strike, I would be like, yeah, like, no, dude. So consider your audience. If you asked your parents about it 15 years ago, they would have been like, that's never gonna, and like Ninja, that guy, the biggest, like a hundred million, like hundred million dollars playing video games. So I would say consider your audience because there are plenty of people that make money doing plenty of shit that most of us are like, what? Like, who cares? Why would you even do that? So I'd say consider the audience. Um, you know, like, like those, uh, like those conventions where people like dress up as, uh, as like storybook characters, like the, like those cons, the con, like the comic yeah, con. Like comic con and dragon con. And I got, I got a lot of buddies that, that like that. And like, I'm just like, why? But, but instead of being like, why I, I just be like, Hey, th there's a lot of things that I do that people are like, why would you do that? You know, like that is, that's stupid. And, and that's the, that such as the beauty thing, the beauty of life is that like, we all have different interests. So I would just say like, consider your audience, but but just because you feel it doesn't necessarily mean that it's valuable. And just because you, just because it means that to you, your responsibility is to help them understand why it's valuable. Because, because there's a lot of like, every, everything has to be sold. Every person has to be sold. Every item has to be sold. Like on Shark Tank, there's this product called Squatty Potty. And it's like this thing that helps you, that helps you go to the bathroom easier. Right. And she was like, one of the hardest things is like convincing people that the way that they've like taken a shit for the, their entire life is not right. And like, herein lies the challenge. And if, and I'll bet you, if they asked a hundred people, like, would you use this? They'd be like, no, absolutely not. Meanwhile, they've sold like a hundred million squatty potties. It is your responsibility to tell me why it's valuable, to convince me why it's valuable. And if, and if it's not me, the next person might. And the person that gets constipated that didn't realize that there was a solution, like you got to find them and tell them and inform them. So, you know, like consider your audience and, and know that it's your responsibility to convince them that it is valuable and your responsibility only. The marketplace doesn't, doesn't just know things inherently. There are so many things that are like dumb, stupid, obvious that most people are like, what is that? Like, I don't, 
you got to, you have to sell it to me. You have to convince me packaging, for example, for traditional products on a shelf, you need to tell me why it's valuable. One of the, the best example that I can give for that is like the infomercial for, I believe it was the, um, the sham. Wow. The guy's like, you can wash your car. You can wash your boat. You can wash the RV. Yeah, dude, we know that it's a rag. But the fact that he said it, you're like, well, I have an RV and I have a boat. I have a car. Like I have a countertop that could be washed, but like, how dumb is that? But that's, but that's what it sold because he told you why he, if he was just like, yo, we got this rag, buy it. You should know, like, you should know that you need this rag. Like it's, it is your responsibility to convince me that it is valuable to sell it to me. And if I don't buy it, like keep trying to sell it to other people, consider the audience. And if, and if they don't buy it, maybe it does suck. Maybe it's not good. Maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's iteration one. Maybe it needs improvement. And that's why the feedback is key. So it, I love it. that's probably the best. Yep. That's that. huge. Okay, well, I think that's all the questions we've got for now. And you have given us so much of your time and we are so thankful, man. Yeah. Um, this has been like so full of value and I can't wait to, uh, you know, the video is live in the Facebook group for, for people that are in the group to see and we will get the audio out there and I'm so excited to get this on the podcast for sure. So um, yeah. where yes. can people- Send me the, send me the file, I would, love to, I would love to push it out in my-, in my Yes. For right. sure. And speaking of, where can people find you? We've got your website is www.ambitioninsights.com. Ambitioninsight.com. A-M-B-I-T-I-O-N-I-N-S-I-G-H-T. Ambitioninsight.com. Yep. Um, Perfect. And on Instagram at... Oh, you froze again. Hold on. <laughs> He's coming back. We'll wait for him to come back. Technology. We'll give him another minute. <laughs> Brett, are you with us? <laughs> are you with us? Possibly. Maybe. Okay, let me see if I can get him back. But as he said, his website is www.ambitioninsight.com. And his Instagram, we're going to give you. He's got his funny one, but his business one is his name, Brett Napoli, B-R-E-T-T-N-A-P-O-L-I, just at Brett Napoli. And then he also has his thatdrop.com site. Um, that's thatdrop.com. And then on Instagram, it's thatdrop, spelled out D-O-T-com. So thatdrop.com. His super funny Instagram that we were talking about that gives people a lot of joy, maybe at the end of a long work day, is take naps. So T-A-K-E-N-A-P-S, take naps. So while I know Brett would love to tell you guys goodbye, he has given us a ton of value and he seems to be frozen for good. <laughs> so um, we're gonna drop all of his Instagram handles and his website in the comments as well to be sure you guys can find it. And for the podcast listeners, this is in the show notes as well. And we're super excited that y'all were here to join us for the artists as entrepreneurs interview series and podcast. Thank you guys for being here and we will see you next time. Bye.